Hi, this is Dr. Ben Fineo with Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to build your own working paper speaker. Before we dive into building the speaker, let's briefly talk about how a basic speaker works. So your speaker has a few main parts. If we turn the speaker sideways and look inside, we see a coil of wire that is wrapped around a magnet. And that coil of wire is connected to a headphone cable that plugs into a device like a computer or phone that can play music. Now, when the device plays music, it sends electrical current through this wire, which goes through the coil and generates a magnetic field. The magnetic field from that coil pushes and pulls on the magnetic field of the permanent magnet, and that causes the body of the speaker to vibrate up and down. This cone then vibrates and pushes on the air, which generates a sound wave and travels to your ears so you can hear the music. Now, those vibrations are usually too small to see when you're playing music that is in the range of human hearing, which goes from about 20 up to around 20,000 hertz. However, if you drive the speaker with a very slow or low frequency signal, for example, this signal is only 2 hertz, so the speaker is moving up and down twice a second, you can actually see the speaker moving up and down. So, now that you understand how the speaker works, let's get started building it. So, first let's go over the supplies you will need to build your speaker. You are going to need 30 gauge enameled magnet wire, enameled meaning this has insulation on it, it is not bare wire. A 1 half inch diameter by 1 half inch long neodymium magnet. These magnets are very strong, make sure you keep them away from small children and pets. You are going to need a headphone cable, also called a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. However, instead of having a 3.5 millimeter plug on both ends, it's going to have a plug on one end, and the other end is going to be stripped to expose the bare wires. You will also need a compatible device like a smartphone, tablet, or computer that has a 3.5 millimeter or headphone plug. Some newer devices have dropped that plug in favor of something like a USB-C connector, so you might need an adapter to the 3.5 millimeter plug if your device does not have that plug natively. You're also going to need some fine grit sandpaper, a pair of scissors, and a hot glue gun, or you could also use school glue or white glue, you'll just have to wait a little longer for things to dry. And you're going to need a pair of little spring clips like this, which are going to allow us to easily connect the 3.5 millimeter cable to the magnet wire without requiring any tools. Finally, you are also going to need the printable paper circuit template, which is available on the Science Buddies website. You're going to want to print this on cardstock or thick paper. It will work if you print it on regular printer paper, but your speaker is going to be a little louder and sound better if you print it on rigid paper like cardstock. So the first thing you'll do to start assembling your speaker is to take your paper speaker template and cut all of these shapes out along the dark lines, and we will then use glue to assemble the body of our speaker. So our next step here, we're going to take our neodymium magnet and the two long strips of paper, and we're gonna use these to make the wire coil for your speaker. So you're going to take one of these strips and wrap it tightly around the magnet. This strip is going to act as a spacer, so the outer piece of paper does not rub up against the magnet when it's moving, there's a little bit of a gap there. Wrap that around tightly, and then after that is on there tightly, you're going to take the second piece and wrap that around the outside of the first piece. Once that is on, you can use a tiny dab of glue or a tiny piece of tape to hold it in place so it doesn't unravel, but you don't want to use a lot because you don't want to gunk up the magnet and get it stuck in there. So when I look at this from the top, after I have tightly wrapped both of those around, I actually have two concentric loops of paper here. The inner one is going to be removed and then I'm going to be left with the outer one so the magnet can slide back and forth a little bit and we're going to wrap the coil around that but again before I get that started I'm going to use just a tiny little dab of glue to hold this so it doesn't unravel. So there we go I've applied the glue to hold this flap down so it doesn't unravel and I have my hands free and now I'm going to take my spool of wire and pull out about a foot or 30 centimeters of wire this is going to make sure you have some extra length to connect to your speaker later and I'm going to make 50 tight, neat coils around the paper core for the coil that I've made here. So I'm going to start like this, kind of pinch it in place with your finger. And again, make sure you have about a foot of wire dangling off. You're going to need that to connect later. And use the spool to just loop the wire around this paper 50 times. So one, two, three, 
for make sure the coils are nice and lined up and bunched against, against each other like this. You kind of want to start at one end of the magnet and work your way to the other side and then you can double back over if you need space, but you should be able to fit most of them in just one or two layers. So count up to 50. I'm not going to show all 50 on the camera here. We will cut ahead to when I'm done and I have 50 coils and I am ready to cut the wire. So there we go. I've got my 50 coils of wire. You can see how I kept that nice and neat and the coils are all tight. I'm going to pull out another foot of wire on this end and cut that as well. So it's going to be about the same length as the first one. They don't have to be perfect. And then I don't want this to start coming unraveled. So I'm going to take the two ends here and twist them together. You can see I already lost one coil there. If you're not ca careful, you have to keep both ends of this tight. Take these two ends and twist them together and then apply a dab of glue to prevent these from coming un unwound. And if you drop your magnet like I just did there, it's not the end of the world. You can just pick the magnet up, slide it right back in. That is just being used to hold the shape in place. So there, I have the wires twisted together. That's gonna prevent them from coming unwound. But I'm gonna apply a few drops of glue to the outside just to make sure I can hold this wire in place. You can see how it might start to come loose at the ends there and kind of block the magnet. So if you need to stretch those back over the paper, apply a few dabs of glue to make sure the coil holds in place and isn't gonna slide around when you move this or put it down. So you can see I've added a few drops of glue to hold that wire in place so it doesn't come unwound on me. Now I can go ahead and push the magnet out and I also wanna push out that inner tube of paper. So it might be kind of stuck there. You can use one of your fingers to push it out. Don't worry if this one comes unwound because you're not going to need it anymore. Again, that was just a spacer to make sure that there's a bit of a gap here and the magnet has room for everything to vibrate back and forth without the magnet rubbing up against the paper and causing too much friction. So you don't need this piece of paper anymore. You can just set that aside. And you can also set the magnet aside for now because we're not going to put that back until we are almost done with the entire speaker. What you're going to do next is take this piece from your template and you can see this dashed line in the middle here is where eventually we're going to be gluing the coil. But first we are going to fold along these dashed lines to make sort of an accordion shape. And that's going to be the spring that allows the cone of your speaker to vibrate up and down. And that's what makes the sound. So place it like this with all the dashed lines facing up. And you are going to fold inward along the two innermost dashed lines first like this. So fold inward crease, then unfold. We'll show each side one at a time. Next, you're going to fold outward along the next dashed line. And then finally, you're going to fold inward again along the final dashed line. So there's three folds on each side. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Make sure you get a nice good crease for each one of the folds. Again, I'm going to fold inward on that first dashed line outward on the next line, crease, and then back in on this line. So when you're done with that, if you look at it from the side, you should have this kind of zigzag accordion shape and you can see how that allows it to spring up and down. So what you're going to do next then is carefully, make sure you don't gunk up the accordion part, take your coil and with a little circle of glue, glue your coil wire onto that circle, and then we're gonna flip this whole thing upside down and attach the cone. Actually, before we attach the cone, we are going to attach this to the base. So this piece is the base with these shaded areas, which are where you will apply glue to attach the bottoms of the accordion part or the spring. So again, you're gonna flip this upside down. These two free pieces are gonna be the bottom, and they fit nicely right over the two shaded areas on the base here. So when you look at that from the side, you can see how the base is going to allow the whole thing to sit flat and keep these side parts vertical, which is gonna give you that springy structure to allow your speaker to vibrate up and down and make the sound. So again, apply two strips of glue, one to each of these shaded areas, and then apply the top piece like that. So there you go, I've now glued the top tart part to the base, and you see how I have that springy action there. Next, we are going to attach the cone directly above the coil. So the cone is cut out as a flat piece that's a little less than a circle. It's kind of missing a pie wedge here, and that is because you can bend it slightly to glue this shaded area behind the tab that's sticking out there 
and that's going to bend it up into a cone shape. So I'm going to apply glue there, let this dry first so I have my cone shape, and then again I'm going to apply a little bead or circle of glue centered on the top of the speaker here, and glue the cone onto there to complete the body of my speaker. So here we've finished assembling the body of the speaker. We have the cone glued on top and everything is mounted to the base. Next, we are ready for the electrical connections. So this is where your sandpaper is going to come in. This magnet wire is way too small for wire strippers, so you need to use the sandpaper to sand the insulation off a couple centimeters at the end of the wire. So you're just gonna kind of have to fold your sandpaper in half like this and pinch it and rub it pulling on the wire like this and that is going to sand off the insulation and it's very hard to see the color of the underlying wire is pretty close to the color of the insulation but if you look at it closely and tilt it under the light eventually you should be able to see an area of the wire where you strip the insulation off that is a slightly different color and maybe a little shinier than the insulation so make sure you do that on both of the wires but this is one of the key steps to look out for if your speaker doesn't work Later, when you test it, it might be because you did not strip off enough insulation and you're not actually getting an electrical connection to your headphone cable. So it doesn't hurt, you can't really over sand it, you're not gonna erode through the whole wire. So just try different angles, pinch, pull on the wire here until they're both nice and shiny looking and you've removed the insulation from both of them. Next is going to be the electrical connection to your headphone cable. So these little spring clips, they have a little button-like thing you can push down on the top there that releases the clip and then when you let your finger go it's going to spring shut to clamp the wire inside there so what you do you're going to connect both of your magnet wires to one end of this hold the button down push the magnet in release the button and you can see that is now in there nice and firmly do the same thing with the other one now connecting the headphone wire is going to be a little more complicated because there are three tinier wires inside this one black, red, and white. The black is the ground wire, and then the red and white are the left and right audio signals. So for stereo audio system, there's left and right channels. You only need one of those. So you're gonna connect the ground or black wire to one of these spring clips, and then choose either the red or the white wire for the other one, and you're just gonna leave that third wire dangling. So I'm just gonna pick red here, put that in, and you wanna make sure this is nice and snug, if you yank on it really hard, it'll come out, but it should be in there snug enough that if you tug gently, the wires do not come loose. So you are almost ready to test your speaker. The next to last step here is inserting the magnet. And remember, these are very strong magnets. You wanna be very careful with them. Don't pinch your fingers if you have them near other magnets or other metal objects and keep them away from pets and small children. And we're not gonna glue the magnet in place. That makes it a little easier to remove it and reuse it if you wanna build another speaker, for example, or you're doing a science project where you want to test different speakers and different diameters or different materials. You can make your own speaker instead of using the template or modify the template. So you can just slide the magnet in by stretching your speaker out a little bit. So there is some stretchiness to this little accordion shape. You can stretch it just enough to get the coil over the magnet and then let the coil pop back down over the magnet. And you kind of want to adjust the coil if you need to make it shorter or taller. You can stretch it out or pinch the creases a little bit. So the coil is kind of right around the, the top of the magnet. You don't want it down all the way bumping into the bottom like this. So your final step is to take your headphone cable and plug it into your sound source. In this case, that's gonna be my phone. And when you hit play, you should hear music coming from your speaker. Now it's not gonna be as loud as your phone or computer speakers, but it should be loud enough that you're, if you're sitting in a quiet room, you should be able to hear it, even if you're sitting kind of halfway or across the room. If you don't hear any music, then again, you really wanna go back and double check especially those sanded connections on the magnet wire. That is usually the most common failure point. You also wanna double check and make sure all of your spring clip connectors are good and that you don't have a wire that isn't actually in there all the way. Make sure that the headphone cable is plugged firmly into the audio jack and make sure that nothing's stuck here, that you haven't used too much glue or somehow gunked up your speaker because it does need to vibrate, which is what's going to generate the sound. Now those vibrations are very small. You probably won't be able to see them but any of those things in the process could prevent you from actually hearing the sounds. So I'll stop talking, we'll hit play and see if we can hear the music. For complete written instructions for this project, visit the link in the description below this video.
For thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.